two of courage. How we need to be men of courage. Things that we need to do in order to become the men that God created us to be to take courage. This morning we're looking at hope and how courage is what is required for us that when we have hope and faith that God is with us and that he is guiding us and has a plan for ourselves for our lives it will take courage to work towards and to know and to have that hope realized. We hope for something. We hope for change. And we have to do our part in that. So that's what I want us to look at this morning. We are living some still in pain, confusion, doubt, and fear. And of course, in those times, we hope for better. We want to be delivered from that. Not just the substances that we put in our bodies, but all of the things that were part of, all of the behaviors, the character defects, sin, actively doing whatever we pleased, only to find more pain, fear, and confusion. We hope for deliverance from that. But it's going to take some work, <coughs> some major changes in who we are and how we are. So we're going to look at that this morning. But first, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning. I thank you, Lord, for your love, for your guidance, for your strength, for your compassion, for your comfort. <coughs> Help us, Father, this morning. Help me, Lord. First, it's not easy at home. Being sick, I'd rather be in bed, Lord, but you know this is where I need to be, and I thank you, Father, for giving me the strength to be here this morning. Help each one of us, Lord, to not only be here physically, but to be here spiritually, in tune with your leading this morning so that we might hear you clearly. Father, speak to me. Don't allow my own thoughts or ideas to get in the way of your message for me and for each one of us this morning. I pray, Lord, that each one of us is able to put aside anything that would get in the way of us hearing you clearly. We need you. Help us, Lord, this morning to hear, to know, to apply to our lives what you would have for us. It takes courage. We hope for better. You have better. Give us the courage to accept it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is it hard to remember the foxhole prayer? You know, I know none of us were really ever in the foxhole. I think the foxholes went out back in World War I, didn't they? Okay, but we know what that means. We know what it's like to cry out inside. Maybe not even with our words, but just our whole body screaming. Because we don't want to live there anymore. We don't want to be that person anymore. Crying on the sidewalk. Crying in a detox. Right? We all know that. We've all experienced that, right? Screaming inside. Help! <clears throat> you know, I remember, and, and it's vivid. Alright, let me use this illustration. I remember going in, you know, many detoxes. But just want to stop shaking. I want to stop throwing up. All I need is a bed. Give me a bed. Give me something to stop me from throwing up. 
cup with ice in it so that I could chew on the ice. Anybody, you know what I'm talking about? All I was hoping for was just to stop throwing up. We hope for so much more. We hope to never have to be that person ever again. Shaking. Sick. You know, at that point, that's maybe all we want. But then they put us in that bed, you know, and we're sitting there and we're able to process what's going on. Cry out. Please help me. Just help me. removed from our 
our head, we don't ever have to think about it again, right? No. No. But we are new. We have a new, it says, firm foundation. The foundation is Christ Jesus. We have a firm foundation. It then tells us, in God's word, that from that firm foundation, he steadies us as we go. So apparently we need help along the way. So when we get on our knees, we're not, again, if God wanted to, I'm sure he would. All temptation is not removed. All of the things of this world no longer call to us. But we're new. Something changes inside. We're able to see these things for what they are. It tells me in God's word that Jesus promised us and delivers when we accept him into our hearts. A counselor. <clears throat> Who is the Holy Spirit. Well, apparently we need a counselor. As long as we are breathing. To point out things to us. So that we don't. We, we're able to at least make a decision whether or not we're going to give in to them. Now live with great expectation, hope that no matter what we face while we're still breathing, we can see it for what it is and make the right decisions. So we still need hope even after we've been clean, washed clean of our past sin, brought new. Hope is a continuation of our faith in God that he will see us through to completion but it's up to us to make the right decisions when guided by God God created us to be his children we know that we have he knows that we have fears and anxiety but if our hope is in him those fears and anxieties can not only be relieved but they can bring joy they can bring joy. How is that? I don't know. I'm pretty happy when I'm able to see an issue, handle it, and work and get beyond it. I'm very thankful. When I cry out to God and I say, God, I'd rather not have to write this four-page report. And I sit in my office. Now, of course, I'm talking about similar things here. I know there's a lot more in life that we've got to deal with than four-page reports. But for me, on a mon Monday morning, that's kind of hard. And I pray about it. Do you pray about things when you see them and you know you have to face them? And work on it and get through it? Do you take a step back and say, God, please help me do this? I joke that when I was a beneficiary and I was the cook, as a beneficiary, my first Sunday I had to do roast, two big giant roasts. I never did that before. I got on my knees in front of the oven. God, please, I have 75 people to feed or I have no idea what I'm doing, Father, help me. Cry it out. Do we do that? I don't always do it and I know I should. But when I do, when I, when I seek God's guidance in my life, and I have to deal with something, even though it makes me anxious at times, even though it brings me stress, and trust me, man, this thing here, this is stress. <laughs> I have the faith to believe, and I cry out to God, and I ask Him to help me with something gets done. And that brings joy. 1 Peter 1.8 <clears throat> You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Was it last week? The 
uh, devotional, I'm going to do, I have the other one from <coughs> Norman Vincent Peale that we're going to do this morning on hope. But last week it spoke about what would you do if Jesus was standing next to you? Sometimes we have to see things that way because He is. See? That counselor that He promised in the Holy Spirit is with us. It's up to us to make a decision to include Him in what we do. <clears throat> do we see the Holy Spirit? Huh? I see His work. I don't see Him. Do I see Jesus walking in the chapel and standing up here next to me? Of course not. But I know He's here. Again, you love Him even though you have never seen Him. Though you did not see Him now, you trust Him. You have faith in Him. Your hope is in Him. And you rejoice with the glorious, inexpressible joy. Words cannot communicate the joy that we experience. So, though you do not see Him now, do you trust Him? We hope that even though we don't see God, we know that He is there, here, wanting and willing to help us with our needs. We reach out to Him. Mark 11, 24. So I tell you to believe that you have received the things you ask for in prayer, and God will give them to you. That if we believe in our hearts that what we pray for How can we expect if we don't believe? You're never defeated, never beaten down as long as you have hope. Keep this thought in mind always as difficulties, sorrow, sickness, and trouble come upon you. Have you heard that old saying that where there is life, there is hope? Man, I say it all the time. Every breath that we take is an opportunity for us to draw closer to God. Every breath that we take is an opportunity for us to get further away from our old self. here, I suggest that you turn it around. Where there is hope, there is life. Form a picture in your mind, not of lack or denial or frustration or illness, but of prosperity, abundance, attainment, health. You will receive as a result of prayer exactly what you think, not what you say. What you believe. What you believe in your heart. Therefore, Practice believing, even as you pray, that you will receive God's boundless blessing, <clears throat> that they are already on their way. When you live with hope in your heart, in your mind, and in your spirit, you have discovered one of the most powerful secrets. If you believe in your heart that God is with you, you will be able to overcome those obstacles. Overcome anything that gets in your way. This is true. One day we will be free from sin. All of it. And our hope will no longer be a need. But until that time, we will always need hope step that we take. Until we are home with Christ in heaven, we will always have need. It is a growth learning process. 
and we'll need courage to work towards what we hope for. All right, I'm going back to, Pete, to, to verse 7 of 1 Peter chapter 8, or chapter 1. These trials that we will go through will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on that day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. When we take our last breath, or when the, 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 uh, or when the world stops, this world. Again, Psalm 126.5. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. We've had many tears. And you will have more. What do we do when we face those times? No matter what comes our way, when we work through it all with our hope in Christ Jesus, the outcome will bring joy. Are we there? Where do we put our hope? Again, when I first started, I talked about, you know, my hope was in, you know, getting into the detox. And my hope was getting some, some ice in my mouth because I was so dehydrated. My, my hope was in them giving me whatever I could get so I could stop shaking, right? <laughs> it's, it, our hope needs to be for more than that. It needs to be for deliverance from all of that. We never have to go back to that life again. We never have to shake like that again. We never have to be sick like that again. It says in God's Word that if we put our hope in Him, that we will shout with joy, inexpressible joy. And I know that's hard to see, to believe, but I know it is true. My hope is in my Savior. And each day when I get up in the morning and I hope that I will be able to handle everything that comes my way as God would have me to handle it, I know that I will. As long as I'm including Him in all that I do. Acknowledging God in all that I do. Inexpressible joy. I wish I had it all the time. But I know what it's like to experience. And I pray that each one of you know what that's like as well. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, my hope each day is in you. You pulled me out of that old life. You've given me a firm foundation through my surrender of self, my acceptance of Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. I, as He died on the cross, I died of that old self. I pray, Lord, for each person in this, in this room, Lord, each person, that they might know this is true. <coughs> Help us, Father, to know as we cry out and sigh at times, Lord, that you hear us. Put us on a path so that we might know, we might be able to hear the words that you gave us today. Give us the courage to accept them as truth. So 
knowing that it is by your Son, Christ Jesus, by the blood that was shed, Lord, we are washed clean. We have a new, firm foundation to start from. We are sinners. And there's nothing we can do to save ourselves but to accept Christ into our heart as our personal Savior. To repent of our sins. We turn away from the person that we were. We never want to go back to that person, Lord. We cry out to you to deliver us. I thank you, Lord, for that deliverance. I pray, Lord, that each day now that has changed our hearts and our minds so that we might seek you in your ways, Lord, you will make known the things that need to be changed, Lord, and I pray that you continue. I know that you do. That we continue to accept that guidance. It was the courage it will take to make the changes each day that we need to make in our lives. Thank you, Father, for being here with us. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our needs. Our hope, our hope in you brings joy. Help us to always focus on you in all of our needs, all of our trials, everything that we face in this world can be overcome by trusting in you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.